I think we will get started now. So uh, again, one more reminder that the session is being recorded. Uh, we always share it on YouTube afterwards. Uh, so if you want to share it with colleagues, uh, they can access it later, probably about a week from now. And if you could change your name, uh, your screen name to your name and your organization if you're representing one. And in the chat, if you could say hello and uh, give us your name, your location and your organization. If you're an artist, for example, you can just say you're an artist or from an artist collective, et cetera. Uh, so for those of you who haven't met me, my name is Caitlin Patience. Uh, I, I work for Ontario Culture Days. I'm the Partnerships and Programs Manager. I am joined today by um, the Partnerships and Events Assistant, Gladys Liu. Gladys, do you wanna give a little wave? Hello, everyone. Okay. We are also joined by Kirstiana Bordage, who is our Programs and Operations Coordinator, as well as our Northern Ontario Lead. Thanks for waving, Kai. And then uh, joined by Kira Park, our Editorial and Marketing Director. <clears throat> so anyone from National Culture Days here today that we might've missed? Kai, did you see anyone pop in? Okay, um, so I just want to give a verbal acknowledgement of our funders, please bear with me, but they're all very helpful and wonderful. A sincere thanks to our funders and supporters, including the Government of Canada, the Canada Council for the Arts, the Province of Ontario, the Ontario Arts Council, and the Toronto Arts Council. Our supporters include Star Metroland, the Toronto Star, Now Playing Toronto, OLG, Artera, Via Rail, and Destination Northern Ontario. We have also benefited from support of the Ontario Cultural Attractions Fund. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen now. And just give me a second while I reorganize a couple of things here. Actually, it all looks good. Okay. Um, so I'm going to flip to our land acknowledgement. Uh, what you see here on the screen is a larger uh, version or sorry, a shorter version, but I'm gonna read a bit longer one. Um, so I'll personalize my own. Ontario Culture Days is active throughout the province, beyond borders and across multiple indigenous territories. We acknowledge indigenous peoples as the original caretakers of the lands and waterways on which we work, create, gather and live. And although we're all located on different land today, I personally am speaking from the treaty lands and territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat and Haudenosaunee people. It um, has been a very exciting experience for me working for Ontario Culture Days, um, learning more about reconciliation and the ways that we can play a part in this important endeavor. And I've also had the opportunity to engage with different representatives from different indigenous communities um, on behalf of Ontario Culture Days. Ontario Culture Days is committed to a continuous process of education and dismantling colonial approaches while celebrating the varied cultural and artistic traditions of indigenous communities. We are committed to fostering meaningful relationships with these communities and supporting a diversity of indigenous practices, art forms and cultural expressions. And we're very grateful to have the opportunity to work and create on this land. Uh, so some of what we're going to go through today here, um, this is the agenda. Um, we'll probably land around an hour, but we booked the event for an hour and a half because in the past couple of years, we found that some people wanted to hang around and ask uh, some questions and brainstorm a little bit. Um, throughout the process, we're going to be popping up a couple of different polls. And if you could just answer those questions to the best of your ability, that would be really helpful. <clears throat> Uh, for anyone who's new or popped in, just one more reminder, we're recording the session, and if you could include in the chat uh, your name, your location, and your organization, that would be awesome. So we have a large group here today. Um, before we start chatting about this year's festival, it might be best to just tell you a bit more about the Ontario Culture Days organization, just in case some of you are new. Kai, if you want to share a link to our website, that would be very helpful. Ontario Culture Days is a not-for-profit organization whose mandate it is to foster the public's engagement with Ontario's arts, culture, and heritage as a way of enriching communities across Ontario, and this supports the vibrancy and sustainability of our sector. In addition to our annual festival, which is the reason we're here today, we also provide other offerings, including articles online which highlight arts and culture across the province. We provide select artistic programming through our Creatives and Residence series. And we also have a wonderful collection of Ontario culture guides for regional travel. And we also do the on-topic speaker series, which includes both in-person and online panels. And all of this can be found through the website link that Kai just shared in the chat. 
So the Ontario Culture Days Festival, as always my favorite part. The Ontario Culture Days Festival is an annual celebration of arts, culture and heritage, which takes place each fall, uh, three weeks, four weekends. Together we work with organizers like you of all disciplines to produce this province-wide festival and organizers present programs throughout Ontario and invite the public to participate for free. We work collaboratively with local, provincial and national affiliate Culture Days groups to make this unique event possible. Um, Kai, if you wanna pop up our first poll, we're just gonna ask you three questions here. The first one is whether you've already begun planning your 2024 Ontario Culture Days events, and that's a yes or no question. The second question is whether you plan to create a focused day or a weekend of events, which we'll talk more about in today's session. That's a yes, no, or unsure question. And the third question is just, we wanna pick your brains a little bit in regards to our on topic ONCD speaker series. Uh, we wanna know what pertinent arts and culture topics are you interested in learning more about because it might be featured in one of our upcoming sessions over the next year. Uh, the, the poll doesn't come up for me, but did it come up for everyone else? We're having a couple of issues tech-wise with the polls. We tested them earlier now they're not coming up. Okay. So we'll get back to them maybe. Yeah, feel free to just jump in and just let me know if you, <laughs> you've had success there. And now I've just uh, given everyone the insight on what to think about. <laughs> so I'm just gonna summarize some of our stats from last year because they are very special and very exciting. Um, for the 2023 festival, we had 487 independent organizers, so different people, for a total of uh, 1,288 events in 97 municipalities across Ontario. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, events were presented in 42 different languages and 12% of Ontarian residents attended. <clears throat> also of note in the 2023 festival, we had 52 national truth and reconciliation events and 96 uh, general indigenous events. Um, the languages, the top five, excluding English, were French, Spanish, Urdu, Hindu, and Punjabi. Um, this is really for the newbies. Um, so Ontario Culture Days Festival event types, this is just a very small picking, but they can be in any discipline, including music, performance, theater, drawing, painting, sculpture, installation, storytelling, history and heritage, dance, off the top of my head, you can also do tech, STEM, culinary, um, just all sorts of things. Um, it's particularly special when events cross over between a cultural, um, a culture and an arts discipline at the same time, like Bhangra dancing um, from South Asian cultures is a dance, but also represents a culture. Uh, so festival, oh, sorry, I just wanna see if I got all of the notes there. Oh, um, in terms of, sorry, give me a sec. In terms of event types, um, these are the types of disciplines, but I want to remind everyone that the actual types of events can be in-person events, whether indoors or outdoors. They can be online events, so they can be happening live during the festival, or they can be pre-recorded. Um, you can do self-guided events. Again, that can be in-person or online. So a self-guided event might be encouraging people to move throughout your community and do like a scavenger hunt or a photo challenge, for example, or it can be online and you could do a session where it teaches people how to do a craft at home. <clears throat> Festival organizers. Uh, so organizers can be an artist or performer, an arts organization. It can be a small business, galleries, museums, libraries, BIAs, municipalities, indigenous organizations, cultural associations. Truly anyone can be an organizer. We see a lot of our community leads come out of the festival organizers that you see on the list here. As an organizer, you only need to host one event to be considered part of the Ontario Culture Day celebration. And you also have the option to create a hub of events and lead it as the main organizer or alongside each participating facilitator. So how can individual organizers participate? Uh, you register your own event and you run it as is. You host and register programming that you would normally run during that period. So that's something to consider as well. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a new unique event. If you already have something running during the festival dates over those three weeks and four weekends, you can register that program to sort of cross promote and bring more attention to it, or you can create new programming. 
You can connect with organizers or hubs in your area, which we'll talk a little bit more about. And at any point, you can feel free to reach out to us and we can let you know who has registered events in your area in the past. Um, but we very strongly encourage collaborative and we do encourage uh, unique programming. So festival hubs, um, for those who are unfamiliar, a hub in general is a collection of activities that take place in one location at one time so that visitors who attend can enjoy a group or selection of events. I always think of it as they can attend and they're sort of everyone's guaranteed to find something they like, especially if you think of it as people coming in couples or in groups, um, we all have different interests. Um, there is also the concept of a festival hub, which is Ontario Culture Days is um, part of our communications plan. So we work with partners in different hubs um, and they are sort of the official festival hubs, if you will. There's also finally the concept of a virtual hub. So if you're going to culturedays.ca to register your events, you can also register a virtual hub, which can be based on a location. It can be based on a particular group. So it could be the Oakville hub, or it could be the Oakville hub at this particular community center, or it can be a themed hub. There's lots of different ways to do it, but essentially once you create the hub, you have to connect three registered events to it. They don't all have to be run by you, but you do need the permission to connect these events. And then you connect them to the hub. And then when people go to that virtual hub page, they can see all of the events happening at that hub. To register a hub online, um, yeah, you need the three events. So Festival Hubs, the reason that we do this program, um, we work with regional cultural partners throughout the province to coordinate the program, um, which offer a density of arts and culture uh, events. These expert organizers that we work with host major events, which foster community engagement, and they also support diverse artistic and cultural experiences. We love hubs because they encourage collaboration within communities. They highlight the uniqueness of each region and they very much foster civic pride. Um, the program this year will be um, will be working with about 17 communities, sorry, within within more than 17 communities across the province, but it's about 14 hubs. Um, and the festival hubs can be found in various regions across the province of Ontario. So we'll work closely with the community organizers in these hubs to highlight their local festival programming leading up to and during this year's event. And although we're working closely with these festival hubs, we really encourage all organizers to collaborate to create a small collection of events where possible. And we encourage those who like this program idea to follow along in 2024 and let us know if you're interested in participating as a festival hub in 2025. <laughs> So the festival dates for this year, uh, if you haven't already seen it in the e-newsletter, et cetera, um, the next Culture Days Festival will take place between September 20th and October 13th. And you don't need to program throughout the entirety of the festival, <laughs> though if you can, if you want to, you're more than welcome. Um, but you can choose to focus on just one week, one weekend, you can focus on just the weekends, or you can focus on just one day. Wow, the sun just came out, that's beautiful. Um, while we are on the topic of dates, I want to note that September 30th is a special reserved day. So September 30th is the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, and it occurs on a Monday this year, Monday, September 30th, 2024. This day honors the lost children and survivors of residential schools and their families, and it endeavors to acknowledge and better understand the history and the harms done. Reconciliation is, of course, an ongoing process rooted in action, both as individuals and as members of our communities. So for that reason, uh, we have set September 30th aside to create space exclusively for events organized to commemorate the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, including those aimed at First Nations, Métis, and Inuit perspectives. So in order to ensure that Indigenous voices and participation are central to any event planned for this day, there will be additional questions for organizers to answer during the registration process. If your proposed event for September 30th does not appear to appropriately and meaningfully reflect the above, then the Culture Day staff, uh, staff or the Ontario Culture Day staff might contact the event organizer for more details. Um, so registration, our provincial deadline in Ontario uh, is July 31st, 2024. I believe that is a Wednesday this year. 
You can absolutely register after this date, but the earlier you register, the easier it is for Ontario Culture Days uh, to promote. And registering before July 31st also lets you request event swag be mailed to you before the festival. So anyone who registers at least one event before July 31st can also fill out a form to request uh, postcards, posters, buttons, et cetera, and we will mail those to you. If you don't have your full event information by this date, although we strongly encourage you to <laughs> have that set up, um, you could highlight a key event because your events can be edited uh, right up until the event time. The registration portal will, portal will likely uh, open in mid-May. So a couple of notes on inclusivity and compensation. I know I'm doing a lot of talking, so thank you for bearing with me. Um, diverse perspectives. So we encourage all our organizers to invite participation from a variety of backgrounds, including perspectives from Indigenous, Black, and people of color, trans, non-binary, LGBTQ2S, as well as individuals from rural, remote, remote, and northern communities. In terms of compensation, Ontario Culture Day strongly encourages organizers to appropriately compensate the artists and creators that they hire. This is because artists fees support fair participation in the sector by all creators. And it allows artists to continue doing what they do best. Um, you can find links to industry standard guidelines on websites like Carfax, C-A-R-F-A-C. Uh, pay what you may is um, another solution um, for events. So all Culture Day's events should be free, but you can also offer a suggested donation or pay what you may option. The reason we do this is to support low barriers to access. Um, but while they're mandated to have free entry, you can now publicly list that you accept pay what you may donations for admission. And you can find more information about that um, on our organizer information page on our website. Land acknowledgements. Uh, we encourage all organizers to share a land acknowledgement when presenting events, especially major events like um, festival opening or launch events. If you're unsure about your wording, you should get in touch with your local municipality or your local school boards because they will often have some appropriate wording available. I think we're gonna pass it over to Kira Park now uh, to just chat with you for a minute about branding and promotion. I'll keep the slides up for you, Kira. Thanks. So we want to celebrate your festival events on social media and on blog posts. So to that end, we do ask you to register as many of your programs as possible before the marketing deadline of July 31st. Just to clarify again, this 31st date is a marketing deadline only. Events listed after this date will still be listed in the Culture Days online events listings. And just another note to that, um, this deadline will be earlier if you're a festival hub. Um, we're, when registering, we ask that you upload more than one photo. If you're uploading a poster style graphic, um, we suggest that you also include event photos. This just makes it easier for us to help promote on different formats. Um, consider what will pe what people will find engaging in your listing. For example, um, a photo of an event, a workshop, artwork, photos of people. Um, also think about your event description. Um, try and make it clear and concise. Can it be summarized in two to three sentences? Um, then you, of course you can also add contextual information. Um, resources and assets. Um, Ontario Culture Day's logos and other assets will be available to use in your event promotion. Uh, we aim to have digital and printable assets available to you this spring as well. Um, Kai, could you share the link in the chat to the organizer resources? The National Culture Day site also has great resources for branding and um, assets. If you're unsure about at any point about how to use the resources, please email us at info at onculturedays.ca. Um, additionally, for those interested in involving other organizers, we have a resource for new facilitators that you can share with them. Kai, if you're able to share the link to the festival primer in the chat as well, that would be great, thank you. Um, so once you've registered your events, start promoting. So here are some tips for promotion. Um, consider listing the event on your website. You can even embed your event card from the Culture Days listings. Um, you can find out how to do this in the organizer dashboard on culturedays.ca. Uh, cross promote with your network. Um, ask your network to help promote your event. Think about ways of expanding your network. 
uh, to local things like local officials, regional tourism organizations, destination marketing organizations. For example, uh, encourage your local regional tourism authority to list your event on their calendar on their website if they have one. Um, when you're doing this, consider prevent providing your network with event details that they can use in their communications, photos and a short description, for example. Um, reach out to local newspapers and radio stations. If you're pitching to media, we have a PR guide book that we can share. Kai, can you add that link in the chat as well? Thank you. Uh, another suggestion we have is to build interest early. For example, if you're working with an artist educator, share some information with them. For example, social media post introducing them. Um, and promote where your most engaged audience is. Um, if you're there on social media, spend your energy there. If you have audiences visiting your site frequently in person, make sure you get those event posters up nice and early and you're talking about your event at other events. Um, if you're a nonprofit, you may also qualify for a Google Ad Grant. Um, these take a bit of time to set up, so um, start early. <laughs> Um, follow in Ontario Culture Days and subscribe to the Ontario Culture Days newsletter to receive notification of when you can begin registering events. Kai, can you share that link in the chat as well for the newsletter? Thanks. Finally, if you have any photos or videos you would okay. like to here. Sorry, Caitlin, go ahead. No, sorry, I was on mute. I was talking. Um, did a newsletter poll just pop up for everyone? It looks like it did. Yay. Okay, so we're going to save you the step. Um, if you want to put your email in, this is where we send notifications about everything that's happening. Um, it's not overwhelming. It's twice a month. Awesome. Go ahead, Kira. Great. Um, finally, if you have any photos or videos you would like to share from last year, um, please send them to us using WeTransfer to info at onculturedays.ca. Kai, can you share the WeTransfer link and our email address again in the chat? Thanks so much. Okay, so I had the polls. I had the polls all along. <laughs> um, so we put up the newsletter one. Um, I think that if anyone else wants to quickly throw their email in, if you're not already on our e-newsletter list, I'm gonna give you a couple more seconds. It looks like it's slowing down. So I think, do I have to end this poll, Kai, before I start the next one? Okay, I'm ending the poll, very official. Awesome. Um, okay, and then here's the poll from before, asking those three questions that I mentioned. I'll give you a minute here. And um, if the three speakers that we had invited today wanna to prepare, you're coming up next. So that's Tanya, Carolina, and I believe either Alejandro or Maria. Are, are Alejandro or Maria here? Yes, we are. Okay, cool. Just, I, I hadn't seen your name earlier. That's great. Thank you. It is Maria, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Started second guessing myself for a second there. <laughs> okay, great. Answers are coming in for that poll there. Give you another 20 seconds and then we'll close that poll. And the next poll that I'm going to bring up after uh, some of our speakers chat for a bit is uh, just a question asking you um, what areas you might need more support in as we move towards the festival. You can think about that. Kai, does it provide them a couple of um, uh, options, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, uh, I think that's good. I'm gonna close this poll. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, for those who are interested in the answers, 67% um, of you have already begun planning your 2024. Oh, we wrote 2023, <laughs> which should be 100%. Uh, 2024 Ontario Culture Days event, 68%. 
Um, and do you plan to create a focus day or a weekend of events? Uh, yes, 65%, that's awesome. And 32% are unsure. Okay, I'm gonna end that now. And I will save the last question for after. So going back to the slideshow here, um, we had talked about festival hubs and I also wanna let you know that I saw some questions in the chat and we will address those uh, at the end, thank you. So if we wanna have Carolina from um, Vaughn, I put up a little slide here for you, Carolina, if you wanna just- Thank you. About, yeah, just your plans or dreams for this year uh, as, as it relates to Ontario Culture Days in Vaughn. Sure. So hello, everyone. My name is Carolina. I work as a recreation lead for the city of Vaughan. Um, so last year I was involved with my colleague, Abby, as well, uh, doing the festival hub for the first time in the city of Vaughan. And it was a very successful uh, hub. Um, we were able to engage um, approximately 38 organizations. Um, we had 72 events happening across almost 50 locations in Vaughan, activating like different communities, different spaces. So it was a great opportunity for the city, not only to activate the spaces, but also engage and get to know other community members that, like for instance, myself or my team didn't work with before. So it was also a great opportunity to like network and outreach um, as a city. And last year we did um, as well, um, we, we as a festival hub, we want to spotlight awards recognition for best program and, and um, then inclusive um, awards. So we were also very excited to, to feel that our programming was diverse, was inclusive, and we want to like gear on the same, um, towards the same um, aim this year. Last year, the city of Vaughan, as of a festival hub, we had this strategy to do expression of interest early on in the spring, just to assess what's the need, what are the what's the appetite from the community, what type of ideas um, does the community have, and it was a great resource for us to know in advance not only who was interested, who wanted to be part, but also what needs in terms of what locations people um, needed, what type of like um, as a community, as a festival hub, we would be able to support. Um, so that was definitely something that, that's something that we're going to repeat this year, doing expression of interest early on in the spring so that we can uh, not only like um, assess what's the need, but also to be able to meet the deadlines of at least having a couple of, of the events by by June. And that way also help us um, create and, and work on the marketing for, for the festival. Also, last year, as a city of, I guess, the city as a corporation, um, you know, there are many departments, many layers, and we created an internal working group that kind of like had uh, different representatives from different departments, like parks, recreation. We also have um, from like um, facilities, communications, marketing. We also have from horticulture. So having different people from a municipality to gather and kind of like first brainstorming, but also um, telling them and showing them how culture this could be a platform for city departments to engage and uh, align different projects that we have as a corporation and to give it and give it like a little bit more cultural aspect to it. And it was a very successful um, approach having that internal working group, not only because it dynamized culture days internally, but also because it allowed like our program to be more rich. So for instance, in terms of like the sustainability uh, team, they, they didn't know about culture days. And because of this, they, were, they, they kind of created this edible community planting, which was great. They, they, they brought on board as well, more like a hands-on artsy activity. So it was definitely something that we think was successful. And we're going to repeat that this year. We're gonna start um, having our internal working group next month in March, just to start brainstorming, preparing the ground for, for the city and also give them time to start planning for, for this year. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out. I know some of the, my, our, Organiz community organizations are here, like Muslim Women of Vaughan, the Old School um, um, Association. Um, so we're, we're very excited to to have these communities as well coming back. And they're also, also important for us is to continue the conversation with, with these organizations, not only during the, the culture days, but kind of like keeping them in the loop, post events, uh, sharing with them, for instance, the, the results, sharing with them the videos this year as well, sharing like, the webinars. So constantly kind of like keep um, tapping from the last year participation and making sure that these um, 
same organizations not only have the information, but can also help us promote and, and outreach to other organizations. And just lastly, um, we did have our um, kickoff event, like a flag racing event on the 23rd, which we did like an encore event that gathered different um, events and activities. Uh, and that was also something that we found very um, successful that we are going to repeat this year. Um, of course, learnings from, from last year that we want to um, improve so get more people um, to attend the, the events and kind of like broaden the scope a little bit of the festival hub because this included like a dance performance, a talking drum performance. We also had different booths. So we invited community groups that were organizing or leading events at different dates. We brought them on site on one day so that they could promote not only their services, but also their events. So the Anchor event itself supported like, the marketing and the outreach for other events uh, throughout the festival. So that's something that we will definitely repeat this year to include, um, again, food, booth vendors, and arts and uh, cultural activities. Um, and yeah, that's what like some of the ideas that we are going to repeat from last year um, because again, they were successful. We proved that it was a good way for us as a city to outreach. And, and I just wanted to say thank you as well for those who are joining us to, to, to learn from us and all swell very open to any feedback and recommendations um, to continue um, kind of like improving and enriching the festival hub. Thank you so much, Carolina. I love how you like shared some tips and tricks in there. <laughs> I also love how you tooted your own horn, the, the horn of the city of Vaughan, <laughs> uh, letting us know uh, what you accomplished last year. That's wonderful. Uh, just a quick question for you. When you say that you reach out uh, looking for facilitators early, what's what does that timeline look for you? So you mean the, the, the expression of interest? Yes. Yeah, so we're thinking of um, May, like having like April, mid-April, mid May, assessing and like doing the expression of interest for people to um, organizations, both those who participated last year and anyone else from Bonn or who wants to put events in Bonn during that three-week festival. And we understand, again, more people, if they, more people come in August, it's more than welcome. And that's what we had last year. It's just that at least by June, we can have a pool of events that we know are going to happen. And that's gonna help us as well as a city, you know, it's more like, you know, need to have more um, times, more um, confirmed um, and like some procedures that you have to follow. So it's definitely something that will help us as a corporation to have something um, like most of the work already um, in progress by the yeah. deadlines that we have for the, as a festival hub. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally understand. And I'm glad to hear you do have an open door policy as the <laughs> as we move into the summer because that does tend to happen, I think, for everyone. Yes, uh, no, last year, last year we did receive a more, but as at least we want to kind of create this uh, engagement in the spring uh, to start working with these organizations. But again, the, 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 the work continues even until the day before. Uh, so anyone, as we did last year, uh, anyone can participate in the festival. Awesome. Okay, so we've heard from the city and uh, now we'll hear from the town of Oak Hill, although quite a large town, <laughs> uh, Tanya Dorizio. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Tanya Dorizio and I'm the supervisor of culture programs um, with the town. And um, we had a very successful culture days in 2023 and we were very um, excited to receive so much interest from our local communities. So we really felt that people were back, you know, wanting to be in person, um, wanting to share um, their their activities with the public and the public also came out. So it was really wonderful. Um, one of the strategies we've used in Oakville, which has worked really well, and this is a result of listening to our community, um, is that they didn't want overlapping events. So we created um, specific hubs within our town. So each weekend there's a centralized area where activity is happening that is predominantly town led, meaning that it's happening in one of our facilities. So um, for example, the first weekend, um, well, in our plan, our for this year, um, we're going to kick off at Queen Elizabeth Park Community and Cultural Center. So this is a really special building in Oakville. 
where we have a lot of art groups and uh, music groups that use this space. So aside from town delivered programs, a lot of um, local artists use this as a resource. And so we offer um, for culture days, if a cultural group wants to offer an activity free to the public, the town will give them space in our facilities for, for free. So um, the first Saturday will be at QEP. Um, the second Saturday will be in a North community, um, community center. And then October 5th, we will be featuring um, two community groups on the main stage at our local theater. So this was something new that we did. Um, we've done, we're going into our third year of doing it, but last year we were much more organized um, because there was so much interest from community to have this opportunity in the theater. We actually did uh, an application process and then we brought in um, jurors from our local um, community to sort of assess the applications and two community groups were selected to use the main stage, which is really exciting for those community groups who wouldn't normally use the main stage and also really great for um, participants who maybe have never been to the Oakville Theater. So it was really wonderful. So we're gonna do that again. And uh, the Oakville Theater is very close to our um, museum. So we're gonna put activities at both locations. And then of course, um, September 30th will be a very special event um, held at our theater. So that's what we're planning in our sort of mini hubs within Oakville. Um, but aside from that, we are also encouraging our BIAs to become sort of part of Culture Days. Um, one of our BIAs has already moved their block party to um, September 21st, which is really great. Uh, so we're we're trying to make new connections there. So this will be a, a learning year for us. Um, we're also um, uh, trying to encourage some projects for uh, individual artists to do special um, public art projects in the town because a lot of what we present in Oakville is either coming from a town-led activity or workshop by our own instructors uh, that work for us or it's from a cultural community group that is uh, doing a musical performance or a dance performance. So we really see that we need to um, foster and encourage and make opportunity for individual artists in our community. So we have a few special public art projects that are kind of um, in the early stages right now that we're developing. Um, one is called Connections 2024. And then another project will be a mural that we are partnering with um, Steps Public Art. So those are a few things that are happening. Um, and uh, we will most likely do another proclamation through the mayor because that did bring attention and sort of kick off the event. Uh, and we did a flag raising and we had um, Bandology, a local uh, music group, um, do a fancy little drum roll for us on their snare drum for the flag raising. So it was just it was fun. It was cute. Um, it was a beautiful day. We had a, a you know, it's just a lovely way to kind of open up the festival here in Oakville. Um, Chelsea Ryan is here today and she is, um, she works with me to make this all happen, uh, cause we, I wouldn't be able to do it without her assistance. And so she's brought lots of lovely ideas as well. And one, um, one idea that she started last year that we're hoping to, um, do again this year and maybe springboard into other areas is because Oakville, a lot of our like our culture department is within our recreation department. We're trying to make connections to recreation that are cultural. And so we did a musical swim last year. And so Chelsea was able to organize music from our music groups and have them play during a free recreational swim. So we're trying to look for connections within, uh, within recreation as well. So those are a few things that are sort of budding right now. Um, and like Vaughn, we did implement last year a spring call for submissions, like call for interest in our community, um, just so we could start, um, you know, organizing ourselves. But as well, we leave the door open that if anyone wants to, comes up with an idea in August or early September, if we have space, we will absolutely accommodate. 
Um, so uh, part of it is, is very well organized and the other part is a still quite fluid and open to, um, to having anyone join us. So there's a few highlights um, of what we're planning for this year. And we're really, really quite excited. That's awesome. Thanks, Tanya. I almost highlighted Chelsea there like as a joke, but then I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to get the spotlight off of her. <laughs> but thanks for being here, Chelsea. I know you're an important part of the project. Um, okay, and now we will hear from uh, Windsor. This is the Arts Council of Windsor and Region. It's very interesting to hear from them because they are an arts council as opposed to a municipality. And unlike municipalities, they don't have a plethora of space to work with. Um, so they do things a little bit differently. So Alejandro and Maria, go right ahead. Hello, everyone. Um... So basically uh, for this year, we want to extend uh, an idea that we tested in the pre previous year, which was the creation of a free tour, uh, tour bus, a neighborhood tour bus that we opened, uh, opened to the public and we went to four different neighborhoods in Windsor. So last year, what we did is we were able to coordinate free entrance to the Winter Art Gallery, to Mackenzie Hall, which is another cultural center, and we visited uh, Fort City. For this year, um, we also, um, because this event was very successful, um, we are going to do it again but differently this time of this year, we want to go farther. So we are going to bring participants outside Windsor and um, we are going to extend the visit to uh, Amersburg, who is about 25, 30, 30 minutes away from Windsor. And we are also going to Limington Art Center, which is about 45 minutes away. Uh, we already st we started the process of planning this event uh, we already have confirmation both from the Freedom Museum in Mammersburg um, and the Limington Art Center that the entrance fee will be waived. So we already have that confirmed. So participants attending the event will be able to get free entrance to these places. Most probably our Windsor Essex will probably do the same. So at this point, we almost um, can guarantee that uh, the entrance fee will be free for all the participants. Um, we are also going to uh, incorporate uh, all the elements the, this time is uh, we already started working with the local uh, youth poet, uh, Shidera Ikewe, and uh, we would like to have the, the poet, uh, is the youth poet laureate uh, by the city, and we would like to have the poet uh, join the event. So we're gonna have the poet as part of the tour, and we started developing an activity that will be developed uh, by her to take place during the trip. And the uh, other event is the, the gallery space. The gallery space. Uh, we also have, we, we run a gallery and we started working with the creative in residence, uh, Jennifer Willett. We would like to invite uh, the creative in residence to make use of the gallery space as, as an extension of their own project. Uh, and we are going to have a meeting next week to figure out how this can, this can work. Um, throughout the duration of the hub window um, and the festival window as well, um, our gallery space rotates to have exhibitions every single week. Um, so there's something new that we're providing uh, weekly throughout the festival as well. Um, and because we're an interdisciplinary gallery space, um, it's exciting to see um, who ends up booking our space during that time and offering a free exhibition to the community. Uh, last year, the, the festival was really successful with the tour bus. So the tour bus starts with us. So folks get to come into the gallery for free, um, see what it is that we offer as an arts council in terms of resources um, and community connection. And then they hop on the bus and head out throughout the community um, to meet more local spaces that um, offer cultural experiences. 
That's wonderful. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, Diksha, you don't need to talk, but Diksha from Milton, I feel like she's listening very attentively because she's been playing around with bus tours um, for other programs uh, for the Arts Council in Milton and maybe mm -hmm. she's getting some inspiration. I don't know. <laughs> um, I feel like we had a question, but maybe not. Um, but yeah, all very exciting. Wonderful. Um, oh, what I was going to say was that um, Alejandro had mentioned the Creatives and Residents. Um, so what he's referring to is Ontario Culture Days' programming. It's our Creatives and Residents program. This year, we're working with nine artists across Ontario, and each of these artists creates some sort of uh, new work, whether it be performative or like a physical exhibition. And then alongside that, there's some sort of community engagement component. So Jennifer is going to be putting on like a Baroque art science fair on Point Pelee Island, but she's based in Windsor. So um, I'm so glad to hear that she's connected with the Arts Council to show some work. Caitlin, we have one question in the chat. Yeah. Can you, uh, share, how, can you share how we can upload events at, all at once a bit more? Yeah. Um, can you clarify what you mean by that? Uh, there was Juliana from Caledon. Hi there. Um, someone uh, just at the very beginning, I'm not entirely sure who was saying it, but there was an opportunity to like, I don't know, batch upload events to the event portal or um, like an opportunity instead of just individually uploading them. I am not aware of that. Okay. Aspect of the, okay. I think it's maybe the hub, like the virtual hub. Yeah. Is that what you were hearing? Maybe we were talking about the virtual hub. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, no, that's yeah. probably what it was, but okay. I was trying to see if there was a way to just like upload a spreadsheet and then they would all go in. Uh, we, we would love that. We'll keep pushing <laughs> forward. Um, I bet. We're talking about, um, and it does come in handy actually, if you are putting together a virtual hub, if you are having your community organizers and facilitators register their own events, they can then tether to the hub and you just go okay. join, 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 like, and you just click them all together. But gotcha, if you're gotcha. doing events, I believe it's still one by one. There is an option to, if you've already set up an Eventbrite for your event, you can just import from Eventbrite. There's a little button that you press and it'll just copy and paste all of the details from your Eventbrite. Yeah, we did it like that last year for the Creatives and Residence programs, right? And it worked quite well. Yeah. I'll oh, also yeah. add, um, there are options to set venues and organizations as like, a consistent thing and that can help speed up the process of constantly if you have them the same venues or you're the same organizer making multiple you don't have to fill out that section every time yeah it becomes like a drop down so um like when i worked for arts milton you would just click our, the arts milton profile and it would populate and you move on to the next question instead of having to write it out or copy and paste it in each time so that's helpful um I don't, I want to close out this slideshow, so I'll just finish with a couple notes and then we can uh, take some more questions and finish our last poll. Um, so we are encouraging you to stay in touch. Um, we offered you to sign up for our email newsletter. Um, we are on social media. Um, maybe we can share a couple of those links in the chat. And um, so we're on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and X. <laughs> and um, we have um, upcoming speaker series events. So we have one happening in March, on March 21st in the evening in Toronto. It is an in-person event. I'm really hopeful that we can share. We're ready to share the link for that, right, Kira? Yeah. Okay. So you can register if you like to. Um, we also run our On Culture Guide program. Uh, you'll notice on our website that there's a huge connection between um, festival events and guides. We're trying to highlight the deeper arts and culture of each community that we're working with. So if your municipality or your tourism organization in your community is interested in an On Culture Guide, just connect us with them. That would be great. Um, and thank you. And I will close this out. You can email me anytime. Actually, my email was on the last slide there. So it's caitlin at onculturedays.ca. And then um, we are also available through info at onculturedays.ca. Um, Juliana, you had another question there? Yeah, I'm just wondering. So we're already starting to plan our culture days. Um, and one thing that some of the organizers are asking are, Things like, so do we register? Like, how do we know how many people are going to come? Because obviously it's like free or pay what you can. Um, and so does anyone have experience? Like, have you registered, have you put your event on Eventbrite and then just had people show up? Or like, basically how do some folks measure um, registration? 
Yeah, and I'll let whoever wants to chime in, um, but there is the option for every event to either take registrations in advance or to not take registrations. The question is whether you're having a drop in a performative event, you don't really need to take registrations for that. Um, but if you are doing like a hands-on workshop, a lot of people do want to take registrations for that. Eventbrite is one way to do so. I will mention that the culturedays.ca registration system doesn't allow you to take registrations, but how does anyone else here manage that? Everyone doing drop it? <laughs> I have a quick note about what we did for our tour bus that may be helpful. Um, we weren't sure what the turnout would be like, so we initially listed as many free registrations as possible on our Eventbrite. And then as folks registered, I added them to our own spreadsheet and then put the tickets back to being available again and let people know individually like, oh, you've been registered. We have your name on the guest list, but that's working for um our smaller number that we could put on a bus so it may not work on a larger scale projects um yeah. that's how we navigated uh keeping our numbers like very traceable <laughs> yeah yeah so things that we're thinking about like a cooking class that has you know the capacity for like 15 people that's something a little bit yeah. different but yeah that's that's a great idea thanks for sharing and if you're doing it through a town or municipality often um you may want to open up your own registration system the way you would for rec programs and do it through there. And just be sure through your communication, I'm sure Kira would recommend this as well to let people know that it is either drop in or first come mm -hmm. first serve or pre registrations, et cetera, with so many open seats, depending yeah. on how you do it, if you're communicating it correctly. I would okay. also recommend that you set your registration limits a bit higher, higher than you're hoping to have. It's free, yes. Because it's free, yeah. um, there will be a certain percentage that won't show up. So yeah, we set it. We typically tend to set it up twice. Okay, I see that Yannick posted the Google form sign up sheet. That's a great idea. Thanks. Yeah, especially because mm -hmm. I think Eventbrite is moving into paid <laughs> paid listings now, uh, depending on how many seats you have open. So uh, free oh, options are great as well. And at Arts Milton, um, we used to just do it, um, <laughs> sort of email us and we'll sign you up. <laughs> we'll add you to our <laughs> spreadsheet <laughs> if it's a small yeah. program. I'm sure little Kaladin can do that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is a question of knowing your community, right? Yeah, there won't be overflowing demand. <laughs> Hi, was there other questions in the chat that we might have missed? Or was that the one? That was the only one I was able to see, uh, just comments, that's all. If you missed your question in the chat, just let us know. Thank you everyone for the comments. Um, okay, so we put the last poll up, that's great. Um, this is the end of our session. Um, we will hang around for five, 10 more minutes. And if you have particular questions or you just wanna chat, we'll just hang out here on the webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. It was a pleasure. Look at all these polite thank yous in the chat. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah, so I'm here for any questions. Uh, Kira and Kai, are you able to stay on for a little bit longer? Yeah, OK. Uh, Diksha says, I would love to know what people are, yeah. Would love to know what people are doing for teens and young adults. It's such a tough crowd. I feel like someone was talking about the youth crowd lately. Um, I've also always struggled with that a bit. So if anyone is able to access that, that audience, let us know if you have any ideas. Yeah, Tanya. I will share what we did recently that got a lot more attention than I ever expected was um, our youth mural. So we... Um, we did a regular call for an artist in our community to lead a youth mural for our newly opened, reopened um, youth center. And, um, but what we did is we had a jury kind of select the top five artists that were sure things. And then we took those five artists and we presented them to our youth council. So we knew any of those five artists that the youth would pick would be amazing. 
but they were part of the selection process and selecting the artist for the mural. So they selected someone that they were very happy with. And, and it was Lynn, and she was actually on one of the slides that we saw today. Um, and then we did an open call for 12 youth to be part of the youth team that would design and paint this mural with the artist. And we received over 100, like 168 applications from youth that wow. wanted to be part of this. It was a free program. They had to commit their uh, from October to March to this program every Saturday for a couple of hours. And like, we just never had that kind of response from youth for a program. So something worked there that got their attention, which is great. And those 12 youth for the most part have been coming consistently to work on this mural and it's beautiful. And it's We're gonna launch it on National Youth Week. Um, but it it was wonderful. And what we actually did is we um, announced this project during Culture Days 2023. So like to get the youth to come on board and we had the artist actually do a workshop in the youth center so that people could get to know her. But that worked really well. But I can't tell you why it just worked really well. Oh, that's an amazing response. Was that the artist that did the portraits? Yes. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I think she was featured in the slideshow yeah. here. <laughs> That's neat. Um, I saw Angela and Carolina. Angela, if you want to let us know your thoughts. Angela Smith from the municipality of... Oh, Carolina, you go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to share our experience last year. Um, so when we're doing the internal working group, as I mentioned, we have, uh, as part of the recreation department, we have someone who is like in charge of like the accessibility and working with people with disabilities. And she reached out directly um, to the group, the uh, youth group that she works with and with, with the mothers and the parents. And she reached out to them in one of the sessions and told them about culture days. And one of the... Um, that the youth who participates on this accessible programs actually submitted their um, expression of interest. And he created, like he's like a 15 year old youth. He created and designed his own uh, program with her, with his mom and friends. And that brought as well many youth with um, accessibility with from all different accessibilities. Um, and it was a very successful event. We got like 30 um, youth um, and it was a very inclusive as well program. So like I would say reaching out, if you can identify groups, youth groups that are already established or parents that might have um, like youth are reaching out and letting them know about culture days and the opportunity for them to create their own events. I think that's powerful and kind of like engage them um, to kind of like be part and lead them the, the experience for them. And I just also want to share something that I attended two, two, I think it was two years ago in Toronto. I think it was the Bentway who created this product, it was like a 10 youth and told them like, okay, we want you to do a tour of how do you see the city? And they designed this tour. So it was from 6 to 8 p.m. And they made us have like, you know, TikTok videos in like in, in the harbor front and so it was like okay how do you do a tiktok video or they also um made us like sing songs while we were walking um, through the bandway so it was a nice way to like engage them in okay let's see how you tour the city from your perspective and i think that was a very interesting approach to like don't not only come to our events but how would you imagine you doing an event and what would that look like for you yeah, I did think of your the first event you mentioned. I did think of that when Diksha had asked about uh, youth events. I, I am also a huge advocate for accessing groups that already exist whenever possible, rather than trying to randomly reach out into the world. Um, and I did send Diksha, I just remembered a group in Milton that um, is very similar. Um, Angela, did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, it, it, it sort of just lines up with the other art one uh, with, the, with the mural, which uh, I wrote your name down, Tanya, I might reach out. Um, I did a project that, uh, and I'm with the municipality, we gave away sheets of plywood to anyone that would want, that wanted to make a, a mini mural, I called it. And I delivered those to schools as well. And we ended up with a whole art, outdoor art gallery of, um, uh, yeah, all these mini murals. Now it was open to all ages, but the amount of kids that did it 
I think it could be a worthwhile project to just promote to kids. Um, and through the, as you just said about through the existing groups. So the schools, um, my, there's a daycare down the street. The daycare did one. It was full of hand prints that were this big. Um, it, it was just really cool right up to the high schools, like literally um, the high schools, actually the art teacher, one of the schools, the art teacher um, made that their curriculum. He said, our budgets are always so tight that he could never manage, um, you know, some big project for them. So the fact that they got a free sheet of plywood for each kid um, was, was huge. Uh, so he actually came and picked them up and, and uh, yeah, anyway, it, it was just an idea that we had that, that went over really big. Um, and uh, when we had, and then in that gallery, I had things going on all going summer on. then. And um, some of those were youth programming. So, which I didn't do. Other people, you know, said, hey, is it okay if we do this in the gallery? And I was, sure. We used a parking lot to do it. I mean, yeah, we could do anything. Even the little wee people um, uh, early on with the toddlers, they were out there one day and she had one spread on the ground and they walked through paint. She had buckets so they could wash their feet off and they just walked through the paint, all different colors, all different kids. They were running and jumping and she had bubble wrap on their feet. So they were making noise too. It, that's cool. I know my kids would love that. Also, the first one you mentioned, I really think there's something to be said for getting that buy-in by giving people a material that they can work with. I think a lot of them feel like they're going to commit to the project more if they're given a piece of it and they have to complete it and sort of bring it back or join a final event, et cetera, put it in together with others. Yeah. And the the naysayers of the project were like, oh, plywood's expensive and you're just giving it away. You know. <laughs> maybe they'll build something with it. They won't actually bring it back. Um, I had uh, actually a sign up sheet at the lumber yard. So that's how it worked. Actually, I, I partnered with the lumber yard and they just gave away plywood to anyone that came through the door. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to sign up and then they kept sending me the bills. And um, at one point I did check and I think I was, you know, maybe there was three or four sheets that I, had paid for that didn't come back. Yeah. Um, but then once the project launched, I got calls from a couple of people saying, oh, I wasn't feeling good. I haven't done my picture. If I get it to you, can we still put it up? So I think every single piece came back at the end of the day. So I think if they're going to go to the effort of driving to the lumber yard, picking it up, signing up on the sheet that was at the door, they're not out there to rip you off. Um, okay. And the other thing that I promoted, um, again, along the same lines of economics was that um, I said, it doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, it doesn't matter your level of ability because so many people said, oh, I can only do stick people. And I said, then do one with stick people. And not one of them came back with stick people. No, I know. People like to exaggerate. Yeah. But um, so to make the project inexpensive, because of course you've got to paint it, I told people, go to your basement, go to your closet. Every time, at least at my house, every time you paint a room of the house, you have this much paint left in the bottom of that can and you put it away, you save it. For what? It never comes out. It dries up, whatever. So I said, go to the basement, open up all your cans of paint. So I created a really cool, in my opinion, um, mural um, with Baby Shark. And all of the other people that, all of the other creatures that live underwater with Baby Shark. And I did it all with paint out of my basement and a package about this big of vibrant colors that I got at the dollar store. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, um, in Milton, Diksha, what we did a few years ago was we went to the local paint store the same way Angela went to the, the hardware store. And we actually just said to them as a sponsorship, would you give us um your accidental samples for example and they gave us so much <laughs> it was wonderful so that's another way to get supplies and be creative about it i hope you got lots of ideas there diksha um uh 
<laughs> Thank you. Tanya had asked, we're not a big group here, Tanya, but it's a constant question we get. Tanya, I wanted to know if anyone had any experience working with BIAs. I know we want, um, a lot of our organizers want to connect with BIAs. Um, so if anyone has any thoughts, feel free to share. Yeah, small group. Can yeah. I pop in? Yeah, please, yeah. Yeah, so the reason behind that project, I mean, it was an art project, I've already explained it, but the reason that I launched it and the reason why I placed it where I did was because um, the town was going under um, a big dig. And of course the BIA was up in arms, of course, because we were shutting down the street for the best part of a year. Yeah. Um, so this was a way to bring people downtown and it sure did mm -hmm. uh, the first, uh, the first couple of weeks of the launch, it was like the 401 back there. And we installed them in a parking lot behind the stores. So, um, you know, they, we, we did a little promo about backdoor shopping. Um, mm. But this project was in response, to, you know, was a way to help support the BIA in a difficult time. So, I don't know. People can take that. And, and yeah, no, it's, it's everything we talk about provides inspiration. Diksha had also made a note, and I forgot about that. Uh, they did Taste of Downtown. So Arts Milton, um, actually during Culture Days last year, created sort of a culinary um, connection map of Milton, sort of encouraging you to go and try new places, uh, Taste of Milton. And um, then they connected with the BIA following the festival and the BIA, BIA liked the idea so much they finally decided to um, do a sort of a taste of downtown Milton and connect the restaurants there you know for an extended period of time for like actually right about now. Um, so I think the focus really is maybe asking yourself the question if their focus is how can we get people to our businesses maybe keep that in the back of your mind because that's their top priority so if you make it your priority as well that might that might help. Um, Juliana asked a question here, would placemaking installations count as part of culture days? Um, that's such a broad term, but Tanya, will you speak to your mural project in Oakville um, and how you register those as part of culture days? Uh, not mural project, um, the windows project, am I calling it the right thing? On the community centers, you called yep. it? Yep. Um, so that, that, those were murals that we did uh, in, for we've done them for a couple of years um and last year we launched it for contact photo but then we also celebrated them during culture days um in previous years we've also um highlighted the artists by bringing them out for a workshop uh and so these are large uh, murals that we um print on a vinyl product and we put them on our windows and they're re it's really a really easy way to get a lot of bang for your buck because mm. that vinyl is relatively reasonably priced and it could create a big impact and at our recreation centers a lot of them are older and we don't have a lot of wall space so the but we have windows so we were able to work with that medium and they also then kind of become a welcoming um, image when you come into the center. So uh, they work really well. I think placemaking installations can count if they're artful. Um, I've seen some really successful ones and sometimes BIAs have, or sorry, my, my head is in BIAs right now. But <laughs> Like sometimes people have budgets to do these things and yeah. uh, and they as long as it's free to the public and it's cultural it they can be really fun right yeah we're thinking of doing um like i think oakville actually has already worked with them but like if pending sponsorship and stuff but working with a company creos um to do like large install that people can interact with for free that are using um like artists obviously to do them, but they're free to the public and just in public spaces. So I just didn't know it's not programmed. Does it still count? Yeah, usually. And that is the hesitation because part of the mandate of Ontario Culture Days events is that they be participatory in some way or offer a behind the scenes view. Um, so I saw that Oakville had registered their exhibition pieces last year. I think you might've done it, or I would recommend doing it as a tour. So if you have two or more uh, pieces um, in your community, you could recommend it as like a self-guided tour and register that. 
or you could ensure that there's a didactic on site that they can engage with and you could um, present uh, questions that they could answer as they visit the site. Or as you said, if they can like physically interact with it, then that becomes the activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Um, I think we will probably wrap it up there. Thank you for all of the wonderful questions and feel free to email me anytime. And again, thank you so much for spending time with us, especially this extra time. I always enjoy these conversations very much. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Stay on in case we need to. <laughs> thank you. Bye.